Once upon a time, there were human beings. Am I a singular human being? You tell me. Is this one person? Probably. I'd, I'd, I'd say this is one body. One body of one person. And yet, there's so many different parts. I got a finger here, 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 and all of these fingers make a hand. And then I've got two hands. And then I've got a nose, and I got some teeth, and I got more teeth, and then I got another tooth, and then I got another tooth, and then I got another tooth, and those make my teeth and my mouth. And then I got this smile, and then I've got this ear, and then I got another ear over here. I have all these different parts to my physical body. All these different parts. Parts do different things. This is not where I hear from. <laughs> this is not where I smell from. <laughs> this is not where I walk from, you know? Different parts of the body have different purposes, different functionalities, different modes of experiencing the world. For example, my feet experience the ground a lot more than my hands do. But my hands experience a lot of other stuff that my feet don't really, don't really interact with all that often. You could almost say that they're in different worlds. My hand and my foot have very different life experiences. These parts of me have their own unique abilities, their own unique story, their own unique perspective. If my foot were to tell you a story, it would probably be about reaching the ground and then moving forward and then reaching the ground and then moving forward and then reaching the ground and then moving forward and then standing and supporting a whole lot of other parts. That's going to be a very different story than what my eye would tell you. My eye would tell a different story. My eye would be like, look at all the things I see and I, I get to move and I, I, I get to just kind of uh, take things in and, and wow, look at this, look at that, look at this, look at that, look at all the things I see. So these different parts of me, different parts of my body have different purposes, different functionalities, different modes of operation. They don't look the same. They don't behave the same. My hand has much more clarified, articular, articulated movements than my foot does. I can count with my fingers. I can't move my toes individually and count quite as clearly. <laughs> These different parts of my body have a different story. They all have a unique purpose, a unique life experience, a unique composure that allows for their purpose and life experience. And if they were to have a mind of their own, they would all have very different perceptions. Every human being has parts to their mind the same way we have parts to our body. Now the parts of my mind are not quite the same way. I don't have a knee part and a finger part and a nose part. They have different names, different descriptors, different jobs. But just the same way that I have all these parts out here that allow for all of these different aspects of physical life experience. I have a whole bunch of parts inside my mind, inside of my consciousness, that allow for different internal experiences. From the ability to speak, to having the words to say, to having certain perceptions, to having certain abilities or gifts or talents, strengths having different aspects of stories. There's a part of my consciousness that remembers being a child, being very small. There's a part of my consciousness that is a grown woman. <laughs> There's all these different parts to my inner being the same way there are different parts to my outer being. And every human being has these different parts. And so, when we take care of our parts, our parts know how to take care of us. If I didn't have shoes on right now, or socks on, and I was walking through this pokey patch, my feet would probably have a really tough time supporting me because they would be in pain. And so I'd be walking and it would maybe be slow and it would maybe be painful and I maybe wouldn't get as far as fast as I want to. 
But then when I, when I look and I see, oh, my foot's experiencing a sensation of pain. Let me do something about that. And so I go and I get my socks and my shoes on and now we get to, we get to walk and my feet get to feel happy and, and a, part of the, a part of the process without being in pain. That's how parts work. Parts have their own needs, their own experiences. And when we can show up for our parts, our parts can show up for us. And so if I were to just forget that I had a hand, just not use it anymore, <laughs> it would make my life really difficult. I'm just kind of like, okay, I've got to do everything with one hand. I got to do all the movements, all the things I need to do with my hands. I'm doing it with half the power that I, that I could possibly gather. But if I refuse to acknowledge the existence of my hand, if I refuse to acknowledge the needs of my hand, if I refuse to acknowledge the presence of my hand as a part of me, it's not gonna know how to be there for me. And our parts of consciousness are very much the same way. Our parts love us and they want to be there to support us. But when we don't love our parts and show up for our parts, acknowledge their existence lovingly, guide them through to, to having their needs met, whatever that may be, our parts of consciousness, the parts that comprise our mind, are going to have a very tough time being there for us. Everyone has parts. Parts of our body are a little more tangible. You can look and see that I have these different fingers to my hand. You can study science and see the different organs that, that exist inside the body. Parts of consciousness are a little more abstract. You can't quite see them in the same way, but they're still there. And everyone, every human being has parts. Every person has parts of their body and every person has parts of their mind. And when we show up for our parts, our parts can show up for us. Mm -hmm.